And just the concept to of a parrot is really cool. And I just love like the way you're going with the parrot. So do you guys may want to touch on that a little bit, like the design of the parrot and like kind of what the inspiration behind that was. And just mean, like why you chose the way route you went with designing the parrot and the the, um, the aesthetic of it. I mean, that parrot like has torn us apart. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it's also brought us together in ways that we never believed that parrot could. I feel like... Um, the, des the design has quite a funny story. So, uh, yeah. So, <clears throat> in in the script, we only discovered this recently. In the first draft, there is a description of what the parrot would look like now. Both and to be fair, I'll give them this. Both me and Ollie blanked that line for some reason. Um, it's in the first draft because we, we and Charles read the, the first draft recently. We went, hang on, that was there the whole time because this story has lasted for months. Now, Ollie, when we were doing the scripts, up until, let's say, the summer of 2021, so last year, about six months ago, what were you picturing when it came to the parrot? Your, your classic pirate's red parrot, more realistic than anything, probably CG if we had to go that route. Because I was picturing, um, and I don't know why, it was like a mix between a real parrot and a marionette. Like I knew it would be a puppet, but for some reason my mind just went to, yeah, it's going to be like this weird little puppet thing that we're going to have to like control from above, right? Like I, I don't know how else to do it. Um, but I was picturing like this little green thing. Um, and then, Charles, what were you picturing from the very beginning? <laughs> Well, I just thought we were going to get like a glove puppet. So like something that looked like something that came from the Muppets. Like from a cost of, from a cost perspective, mostly. But also I just thought that would be funny. <laughs> and what's really funny. So we all had very different ideas of this power. And the reason we bring that up, John, because is um, this, we all had like a debate over how the seat, so there's a certain scene in the film uh, where the parrot's particularly prominent and we all have big debates about what, how that scene should go and we'd literally be going round and round in circles. And I think it's a story of why people should be transparent with each other when you're working, when you're working together because we all had different interpretations of what the parrot looks like and that adds a lot because of how it will move and how it will act mm -hmm. in the screen. I was like, well, we wrote in the script. It's like a Muppet-style parrot. And it's in the first draft. <laughs> is it? In the first it draft, is. there's literally the yeah. line, Ollie reveals a Muppet-style parrot. Now, for some reason, both me and Ollie just, we saw that and went, oh, yeah, we're not going to remember that. And just, that I, idea I think, went, basically. I think the reason why I did not remember it is because when I, because the first draft I did in a night, and I just wrote it all out and sent it to Charles to say, hey, do you want to touch it up? And I think Charles added that in. And yeah, I paid I no that. attention to it. Because I was like, okay, it's just a parrot. Charles, fair, that does, that does happen a lot, though, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, I add stuff into the script all the time. I like ninja into it. And you so won't I'm, tell anyone. And then we'll read the script and yeah. go, wait, <laughs> that, where did that line come from? Because that wasn't there yesterday. And it'll be something really dumb. Yeah. That will just suddenly pop up, and we're like, "Oh, god!" And then sometimes it's me. Yeah, Cameron. Sometimes you don't sneaks expect in. it from me, so I get away and, with it. And then, yeah. so essentially, it kind of I said it tore us apart because we just wouldn't agree on because when it came from Muppet, Cameron jumped on board that it should look like a something that comes from I, I love the Muppet. The, the minute uh, you mentioned that, I went, that makes so much more sense, and but, that's funnier. But Ollie, Ollie you was, had a different... I was adamantly against the Muppet. In my head, it didn't work. I, I didn't see where the comedy came from. It, it just sounded cheap. Uh... And I think it's because I know what the parrot actually looked like. Mm. And that heavily swayed my idea on how this parrot should look like. 
even though I got the color scheme wrong. Because <laughs> I was imagining a red parrot, even though the parrot in the picture is green, which yeah. is what we ended up with. Yeah, the, the real parrot was green. Yeah. You were picturing a red parrot. I, I was picturing something Some else. Some f- marionette. I don't even know why. I think my mind just went there. But so for context, we worked on the script for I think about six months before we all realized we weren't picturing the same power. Yeah. Because it, it became time to go, cool, so we need to design and make this thing. How do we do that? And Charles was like, I'll just try and find someone who can make Muppets. And we went, what do you mean Muppets? Yeah. And then an argument broke out. So <laughs> we, at that point, I then did some rough drawings. I'm no artist, but I like, kind of came up with a rough idea. And then our friend Kira um, did some great concept art um, and a really nice version of the um, the designs. Um, me and Ollie still had some disagreements over it. Um, and Ollie, do you want to elaborate? Did you want a bit more on that? Yeah, I was just an- anti Muppet. It. I don't know why the idea of just again, it just didn't work. I hated it. I couldn't stand it. I almost stepped away from the project, and I was like, "You, you can just have it," because I just didn't want anything to do with it anymore because of that stupid parrot design. Even when it comes to like the, what do you think of these looks? I don't care, pick one. What do you think of the colors? I don't care, pick one. And and I would try to suggest some options to which Charles would just go, no. Mm -hmm. How about this one? No. Maybe go in more this direction, no. So I, I, I think it's because it, and that's always like the hard part when you're, working with other people I think and Mm. on this project when you've got very different you're really attached to something as well and you have to be prepared to compromise and it was like we would only say no because I'm very I'm a huge fan of like Jim Henson style puppets and I know what visually works and what doesn't it does happen but but this like you know in the pre-development of any script that's even remotely important or worth making people are going to get passionate and yeah. I think that's one of the hardest lessons that we learned that, and it's the advice I'd give honestly any filmmaker is when you're writing a project, no matter how personal it is, you need to get used to the idea that someone else's idea might be better or more practical for what you're shooting, but also the real world might influence it. I mean, depending on your budget, depending on where you can shoot, how you can shoot, that's going to dictate what you can do with your story. And that's a very hard thing to come to terms with as a filmmaker, because obviously you're the one imagining this stuff and creating this stuff. And the minute that someone says no, even if it's practical, because Charles was thinking from a producer's perspective, it was just a practical, we can't achieve that. And it's a very hard thing to grapple with. I know a lot of people who frankly can't grapple with it because it's, they're so protective over their idea because it's so personal, like, you know, creating a film, at any level in any kind of any kind of art form really it's so personal because it's for you you're putting yourself into this project and how you see things and we've had a really interesting we've had so many interesting discussions about how we see even just comedy we have differences we have discussions and we have to try and work out what is objectively the best course of action and then when can we have those moments to go i've got this crazy idea it's only going to be funny to me but can we do it um, we have to sort of make room for those to sort of satisfy ourselves as well. But for the most part, the approach to this project has been ridiculously practical based, where it's just, can we achieve this? Does this work? You know, will this actually appeal to an audience? Would they find it funny? Because what we find funny is not exactly what everyone's going to find funny. With the parrot, it was um, kind of was quite right with the design and everything. We were thinking... Um, and I was definitely thinking at the time, like we wanted it something that was really appealing to an audience. It was fun, cost effective, and would also add some real cats to the film. Um, though me and Ollie had the, the differences at the time, we kind of, at, at the end of it, we kind of agreed that we wanted something that our audience would enjoy. Mm. So um, Kira drew, drew these wonderful designs. We, um, found an amazing puppeteer, she's called Linda Fletcher. So her company was on Etsy called um, Fuzz and Fur Puppets. And she'd come up with all these incredible um, puppets. And I was in discussion with her for a long time. She then, um, we commissioned her, she made the parrot. um, And I think it was literally only when 
I sent videos of me with the parrot to Ollie, I think you kind of got onto it again and why yeah. the design worked. And as you can see from the trail, you know, the trailer and the designs, like he's got such character to him. And that's the wonderful thing about why I think it's really great working with puppets is you as an audience can project your own ideas onto it. Cause it's just a glove puppet essentially, but like you can go, Oh, he looks angry or he looks scared. or he looks sad, but it's really just in the movement and the look. And mm. I think when you grasp onto that, right, Ollie, you, um, yeah, because again, hated the idea until I saw what it the final project or product was, and I was like, "Oh, I now know what this character is." Because that's been another huge issue is none of us could figure out what the character of the of the parrot was, and it was just this blank canvas. We're like, "We'll get someone to voice it, and they'll make the character." And that was I kind of what we were going for. But with this yeah. design, do you have who, who has the parrot now? I think I do. <laughs> Ooh. I have him in a uh, supermarket carry bag. He's dead. He, he's dead at the moment. He's oh. dead. Um, he he just drank so much bleach. As soon as I could see a physical parrot, I was like, I know exactly what character this is. I know exactly how we should write it. I know exactly what voices should be attributed to it. It, it, it works. I was going to say, it's oh. funny you guys say all this because in my head, when I heard you guys were like having, like going to go for a parrot, in my head, it was either, I was like, okay, either like, I don't know why I was thinking, so you maybe just like somehow acquire a real parrot <laughs> and then like dub it over after. But the other avenue was kind of same thing as Charles. I'm like, or like, you know, Muppet style. And it's funny in my head before I even heard of anything or like seen the parrot or anything like that, the actual parrot that the real parrot that's now in existence, um, it's exactly kind of how I would have pictured a parrot, like that style parrot in my head. And I thought like, just that happening and seeing like the idea, the vision that I had in my head, then seeing it be so similar in reality, um, just kind of checked a lot of boxes, but also too, it kind of, it really helps. Like, I feel like leaning into that kind of puppet and like Muppet style parrot really like goes hand in hand with the essence of this film and kind of like just the overall like vibe of it, like kind of just fun, kind of goofy, kind of just chaotic um, situation and everything. So I thought like, yeah, again, when I first saw the parrot and it's like current state now, it's, um, yeah, he has an amazing job and the puppeteer did an amazing job. Just everything just works really well for the, uh, the script and the film. So for something like that, I think it now shows how important it is to like be really clear on with certain characters and things like what, you know, what you want from it. I think when you're going through that creative process. Um... It's really weird because every single, like, so for context, and I don't think we've actually discussed this officially yet. The film has, I don't even know how many characters. It's something like 20 to 30 characters, like mm. named characters. It's quite a few. And I don't think any of us disagree or have really, really strong opposing views on, I think, most of them if not all of them actually like there's some that we just don't like <clears throat> as individuals find funny um i'll say we all find it as in there'll be a character that ollie's written that i go not my kind of thing i don't get it but if it works as long as it works great same thing with me i think i i brought in a, a character that i i'm really passionate about that might get no reaction but i want to try it and see if it works and that's kind of the vibe of the yeah. film basically like none of us go yeah, no, we think that's the worst thing ever. We completely disagree with that. It's like, we can kind of see what someone finds funny. And as long as I can justify it in the script and the story, we've always, we've always like had that open dialogue of, if it works and doesn't like ruin a scene, why not? Like, it, it's fun. And again, most of these characters are kind of somewhat based off of the energy of real people anyway. And um, that I don't think we've ever disagreed on any of those characters. Like, I think the main principal characters and the main supporting characters, I don't think we've ever had a disagreement on. It's just the background characters that might pop in for a joke and then run away, literally. Or, you know, we're constantly coming up with stuff like that where it just feeds into our individual, very unique sense of humour. And there's certain things that, like, say, me and Charles find funny that Ollie doesn't, or Ollie and Charles, or Ollie and me find funny that Charles doesn't. It's, it's that kind of back and forth. And as long as we can discuss it and figure out, okay, like, there is a, there is a logic behind this. 
and people could find this funny, then we'll give it a go. But I don't think we actually disagree on any of them. I don't think. No, it's just the parrot, wasn't it? It really? was just the parrot. But um, yeah, the parrot's so important, we had to get him right. I think that also goes back to we didn't have a character for him, mm. which was the biggest issue. 